enjoy uh, this time that you've given us uh, by your grace uh, to uh, rejoice in the life that you've given us in Christ. Uh, thank you for uh, this time. Thank you for the verse that we'll consider this day uh, in praising you. Thank you for this time of worship. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a time much of the Western world uh, makes a somewhat feeble attempt to celebrate the birth of Christ. We don't know the exact day of Jesus' birth. And that's because God has chosen not to reveal that exact day to us. Because he knows that we would be prone to worship the day rather than the person. Jesus' birth was somewhere between May and June, most likely. But religion does not dictate nor determine the birth day of our Savior. God does. But we do see his divine origin here because the Holy Scriptures declare his reality to us. Invite your attention to the book of Galatians, the fourth chapter in verse number four. Galatians four, verse number four. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. In the fullness of time, Jesus came. But to understand time, we first must go back into eternity. For time to exist, there must have had a beginning of it. And God is the beginning of time as we know it. Because Genesis 1-1 declares in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God in his holy, sovereign infinite nature, fashioned time as we know it today. God determines time. God formed time. God defines time. And his time is measured in his eternity. But why did God create time in the first place? Because we know God had a purpose in doing so. And when the time was right, his purpose will always be accomplished. And this is it. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. When time was full, when God concluded the time was correct, when the Lord determined the time was right, when he decided that the time had come, he came, God came. In the fullness of time, God sent forth himself as the Messiah. In the fullness of time, God showed us the Savior. In the fullness of time, God gave the world Jesus. Before a portion of his eternity was ever to be measured, God was already there. Before time ever became time, God existed. Before time ever became real, God was real. And because God has always been, God is endless, God is forever, God is everlasting. And Moses tells us, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Psalms 90 and verse number 2. So in the fullness of time, God sent forth his Son. In the fullness of time, Christ was born. In the fullness of time, Jesus came. And the scriptures tell us he was made of a woman. Made of a woman means born of a woman. Born of a virgin. Christ is not just some made up story. No one made God. No one made Christ. No one made Jesus. 
God himself chose to be born in human form this way. God chose to take on human appearance. God chose to be born of a virgin. And God inhabited human flesh. Made of a woman. Made under the law. Born under the law. Under God's order, we all need a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus. So Jesus was born under the law system as the only one who could live up to God's perfect order. He lived what we couldn't. He did what we didn't. He lived up to what we could never live. And he chose to die according to that law for you and I. So we could forever live with him. In the fullness of time, Jesus came. We can't live good enough to ever deserve a place in his heaven. But we can live forever with him. We can't ever be worthy enough to have a home in his heaven. But he chose to die according to the law for you and I. You know, in all of the religions of the world, the only one God that chose to die for you and I is Jesus Christ. No other religion can claim that. Because in their minds, God can't die. But an eternal God can shed his life and his blood for you and I to rise again so that we might rise into a heaven filled with his glory forever. Made under the law. In the fullness of time, then God came. In the fullness of time, he came. In the fullness of time, Jesus came to save you and I. And he came for this reason, if you'll look with me in verse number 5, to redeem them under the law. You see, we're all under God's law. We're all under his order. And according to God, his order is perfect. And we are not. We cannot live up to his perfect standard. And because we do, we are guilty. Because each and every one of us has broken his perfect law. So we live in a state of guiltiness before him. Therefore, we live under a death sentence that hangs over our heads. But the word redeem is a legal term and can be, understand, can be understood in the following three senses. First, it means to pay the price demanded. Jesus paid the price so that we could go to heaven. It means to pay the cost. It means to pay the agreed purchase amount. The second sense in which redeem can be used refers to buying back something, buying someone, buying something from another. And lastly, it involves setting someone free. I love this. Setting at liberty someone who is previously in bondage. Setting someone loose from prison. And the price paid was for God to die. This was the amount demanded for our release. This is what it took to set us free from sin's curse. And praise God, God paid it. He doesn't expect us to try to pay it. He paid it. Again in verse number 5 we read, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So in the fullness of time, Jesus came so that we could be adopted into his family. 
In the fullness of time, Jesus was born. In the fullness of time, Christ was born to die. Luke tells us that they wrapped Jesus in swaddling clothes. In swaddling clothes were burial attire. And in caves throughout uh, Judea, swaddling clothes, burial clothes would be buried so that if somebody died, they could be wrapped in their burial clothes so their body would not decay prematurely. And of course, they learned all that from the Egyptians. So Jesus was wrapped in a death shroud. Jesus was born not to live, but he was born to die. And he did for you and I. Praise God. He paid this on the cross for you and I. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jehovah Jesus purchased our freedom. That we might receive the adoption of sons. In the fullness of time, Christ came to offer us a gift. In the fullness of time, he gave. He came to give us eternal life in the fullness of time. He came that we might become part of his heavenly family. Are you part of his heavenly family? And this is his promise to you. Amen. This is the promise that he has promised us. Even eternal life. That's what God is promising. That's what he's offering. That's what he wants to give you. So now, in the fullness of time, this time, right now, you've heard his word. In the fullness of time, you've heard his gospel. In the fullness of time, you've heard his good news. There is no greater message to share than this one. Because when we could never climb up to heaven on our own, God's heaven came down in the form of a baby to die for you and I. Wow. When we could never reach up to God, God came down to reach you and I. So the hinge of all eternity then hangs on the door of a Bethlehem stable. And the whole alphabet of human history hangs upon this one fact. A baby was born to die on a cross so that you might be given a place in heaven. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. When we could never save ourselves, God came down to save us. Christ came to give you a home in his heaven. He came to give us a heavenly family. In Jesus, God came seeking us and he's seeking you right now as I speak in the fullness of time the Messiah came to save and to save you and I in the fullness of time Jesus was born that we could be born again not in human flesh, but be born in his spirit. Amen. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God came down to this earth for you and I. Amen. Beautiful. Behold, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Second Corinthians, the sixth chapter, verse number two. You see, there is a time, and we're experiencing that time right now. 
Now is the accepted time. You want to be accepted by God? Here's how you can be accepted by him. Just open up your heart and ask Jesus Christ to come in and you'll be accepted forever in his family in the fullness of time. Amen. Thank you. 
Thanks for this, Sister Helen. 